Welcome to the Trues, the Metro Chelsea fan Paris racism incident has shocked football and it takes fans of West Ham United to put the record straight. It's how we do it at West Ham. Can I get on the train, sir? This is West Ham, my friend. Yeah, on yes, your car. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, at least something positive has come from that terrible and confusing retrospective racist incident. But do incidents like this happen in isolation? Or is there a connection to the broader football story? A story of capitalist colonisation of the beautiful game? And does the story of football relate to the story of society? Let's have a look. 48 hours later, the debate over what happened at this metro station rumbles on. <laughs> It's worth pointing out that this terrible racist chant is based on a song from the film Sister Act. Do you know what I got from Sister Act? What, if we all pull together as a society we can achieve everything and save the nunnery? No, some fucking good racist chants. And among those from the football world joining in the condemnation, one of the candidates bidding to take over from Sepp Blatter as president of FIFA. The media is making a decision to connect this racism to all sorts of issues. Are we a racist society? Would it be better if Louis Figo was president of FIFA? One aspect I'd like to look at is, is there a connection between premiership rights being sold for 5.1 billion, more broadly the huge amount of money that's in the game of football, and the lack of that money that's passed on to fans or finds its way to the grassroots? Is this a microcosmic example of what's happening across the world. It's not Chelsea Football Club. This is not Chelsea. They are not Chelsea. This is not Chelsea. They are not Chelsea. Who gets to decide what Chelsea is? It's interesting that Mourinho has come out to condemn this racism so visibly at a time when Chelsea is aggressively expanding in foreign markets like the East and Africa. The Chelsea spokesman said this Activity, these chants, these slogans have no place in society. But you can't say that. You can't partition society off and say these people are in society and these people are outside of society. You can't say here behind this barrier we are making deals for 5.1 billion and over here people are being racist. All of these things are connected to one another. Now, of course, before Sky's money and BT's money, there was worse racism in the game. But isn't there a link between huge numbers of disenfranchised people witnessing huge amounts of money and wealth and feeling like they have no power, no purchase, no ability to impact? One of the fans identified as having been on the train, though not necessarily involved in the chanting, is 21-year-old Josh Parsons, a finance worker. In one of the photos of him, he's pictured next to UKIP leader Nigel Farage. But there's no connection between Nigel Farage and racism, you understand, and to say so would be litigious. The Met Police are now trying to identify all of those involved, even though any offence was committed abroad. UKIP's fuel is fear and disenfranchisement. If you have people that feel fearful and disenfranchised, and UKIP say, well, you feel, we know how you feel, you feel fearful and disenfranchised, and it's because of immigrants, it's because of these people, then that's an attractive argument. What we have to do is accept that you people that are inclined to vote UKIP legitimately feel frightened and unhappy and we need to tell them that there's different ways of addressing that problem that you're right to feel angry you're right to feel afraid but the place where you are directing that attention where you're directing your frustration it's not the right direction we feel ashamed but but maybe we shouldn't because we are not I refuse to be connected with these people. You can't refuse. You can't refuse to be connected with people. I'm not saying it's Chelsea FC's fault or Jose Mourinho's fault. I'm saying it's a problem that goes much, much broader, much wider. Initially into the game of football, where at the top tier there's billions and billions of pounds sloshing about, and at the lower tier fans are being charged too much money and not being consulted or respected. You can't refuse to include people. When you refuse to include people, you get the rise of UKIP and you get the rise of terrorism. When you get wealthy elites making the decision and not including people in that process, you get the rise of extremist groups. When huge numbers of people feel that they have no impact, no way of relating to or negotiating with society, you will get ugliness on the level of terrorism and on a more trivial but equally ugly level of racist chanting. There are groups within football that are trying to do something about it. Whether it's the excellent Justice for the 96 campaign that's been campaigning for 20 years now to see truth emerge 
emerge from the Hillsborough tragedy where there's been a cover up by press, police and government. There's Crystal Palace fans for example. Crystal Palace supporters have unfurled a banner in protest against Premier League ticket prices in light of the 5.1 billion TV deal. FC United when they were disappointed, disgusted even by the Glaziers takeover of Manchester United taking their club further from them, set up their own club. And there are now many supporters, affiliations and group that are campaigning for fans to be represented at a board level in the clubs that they support. This isn't a culture of disconnected individuals and rogue groups. This is a culture that's influenced from the top down until people at the lower tiers of society are empowered, have a stake in the institutions they care about, whether that's football clubs or government, you're gonna have these kind of problems. Whilst the people on that train chanting are not blameless, I would say they are powerless. And as long as we insist on telling the story that individuals, crazy individuals and rogue groups are responsible for shaping our global story and creating global pain, we won't be able to create a change. The people that can make the change are the people that have the power. In this case, it's the Premier League and the clubs themselves. They're the ones with the money, they're the ones with the power, and they should be sharing it with the fans. That's some true news. Subscribe here. a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Trues is like the news. If the news was true, I want some trues. Let's have some trues.